Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. So you guys know when I usually go to a new city or a different country, I always vlog my experience there. But there were times where I felt like I wasn't explaining too much or sharing my experience at a restaurant, like a cafe or any like touristy areas that I went. So I wanted to create a city guide for you guys. I'm really hoping this would help you guys plan your next trip. And I want to start off with Paris because that was my most recent travel destination. I personally like traveling to cities because I feel like there's so much to do and so much to eat and a big part of my travel planning does revolve around restaurants I personally think that the food in Paris just in general is above average it is really hard to find like a really bad meal a really bad coffee like most of the places are pretty good and one of my absolute favorites is Lulu I would say it's a very popular place I feel like you always have a good time there the food is always good and I've been there twice now my first time was for lunch in the summertime so I got to sit outside it was such a beautiful lunch like the whole ambiance is really amazing and on my last trip I went there for dinner it was a rainy day but it was still nice they weren't doing outdoor seating of course because it was like winter time and it's like really freezing outside so I feel like I had two very different experiences at this restaurant and they were both so pleasant but if I had to choose I would go with dining outside you can really have a nice lunch there maybe getting pasta and pizza might not be like the lightest lunch you'll have but regardless you're going to have a good time and their drinks are really really good another lunch place that i want to recommend is at the ritz it's kind of like a similar vibe but a little bit more serious i would say also i think the price point was a little bit higher but the food was incredible every table had like the most perfect looking rows you could tell it was like cut fresh that morning it was just beautiful but it is a little bit on that quieter side so it's not like as lively as lulu so to speak i ordered the french beef it was such a unique dish it was so delicious the whole dish was just made so perfectly it's plated beautifully there was like fried potatoes and then like beef and then more like mashed potatoes it was so good so i highly recommend that place for lunch and the next place is called mario and jeanette and they are a very like seafood heavy kind of restaurant I went there both for lunch and dinner and I want to say I do prefer that place for lunch again. Their best dish in my opinion is their salt baked fish. It is so good. It is always seasoned like to perfection but it's really nothing fancy. It's not too salty. It's so moist. It's just so good. But if you're used to a lot of different sauces and a lot of like different kicks and flavors, this might feel a little bit boring to you guys. And this restaurant is also right next to the Eiffel Tower. It's like a two minute walk. So you can go see it like before and after especially like for the light show and the next one is caviar caspia so this was actually my first time at the original location which is paris i've only been to the one in la twice i think and the menu was very different the one in paris was very seafood heavy whereas the one in la had a little bit more variety i was honestly so looking forward to their fried chicken because it was so so good in LA and I thought maybe the Paris one would make it even better but they didn't have it so I was a little bit disappointed but they are very famous for their potato with like a bunch of caviar on top it's really good like I am personally a huge fan of that potato I know some people are like this is not worth the money but I personally love it I get it every single time and this time when I went I got there either it was like a crab or lobster bisque and I'm usually not a fan of that but with this one, I think that was probably the best one yet. Let's say it was crab bisque, right? You could tell that this soup was made with a ton of crab. It was like very high quality, so much flavor. Like you could just really tell the difference. So I really love that. And oh my gosh, the dessert. There was this one that I got that I inhaled in like two minutes. If you love raspberries, you have to get this dessert. It was one of the best desserts I've ever had. Like when I go back to Caviar Caspia, I'm getting that potato and that raspberry dessert. And the next place I have is called Chez Lamy Louis, I want to say. This place has been on my list for a very long time and I finally got to go this time and it was truly glorious. I forget if it's reservation only, but I know it is a little bit hard, especially for like Americans to get a reservation there. Like if you call the restaurant to make a reservation using your like American phone number, they probably won't even pick up. So I recommend asking your hotel to make that reservation for you. And then when I got there, there was a manager. I don't know if he was the actual chef, but he wasn't like the nicest person, but I've seen some horror reviews about 
this restaurant so my expectations were really low but he was just like not the friendliest we only had like a two second interaction before we got to like sit down at our table but the rest of the staff was very very pleasant like they were so funny and they were like joking around saying that they get a lot of american customers there but guys the food was incredible the duck comfy was like the best duck i've ever had and i mainly wanted to go to this place for their potato cake so it's a cake made out of like all these sliced potatoes in duck fat it's so good with all these like garlic bits on top so i thought that was a side dish for the duck but i think the actual side dish was the fries this was the best fries ever it was so skinny and thin but it was like a whole mountain of it oh and before all of that i got escargot which was again like the best one the food there is incredible like i understand why so many people like want to go there so those are the main restaurants i want to touch on i mean there's still like seven other restaurants i want to talk about but i think this would be like a good starting point i should have mentioned this earlier but the city guide i'm putting together is obviously very personal so these are pretty much like the main things i like to do when i travel food coffee shopping and a little bit of like touristy activities so the second category I have is coffee One of the most memorable places I had coffee in Paris was this Hermes store It's the boutique with like these two I don't even know like weird like egg not even egg it's like this kind of shape like you guys know what i'm talking about it was that store it was my first time there and i didn't realize there was a cafe in there so there's like a whole section of books on the side and then they have like little tables so you can sit down for coffee and the coffee comes out in the hermes tableware and you get to see the whole boutique because you're sitting kind of like upstairs that location i mean france is the motherland of hermes so i really didn't expect anything less but wow the selection they had for everything was just incredible there was so much eye candy everywhere especially for shoes the amount of exotic shoes i saw was like crazy but it is a very busy store so if you go especially on like a saturday just be prepared for all the crowd believe it or not i actually don't like pastries i love seeing them i love smelling them but i don't actually like to eat them maybe like a bite or two here and there i feel like it's just too much sugar like too much butter like it doesn't really sit well so i actually prefer prefer to look at pastries. I still didn't get to go to Cedric Orlais in Paris. I've only been to like his thing in London at the Berkeley Hotel, which was such a good experience, but that's like for another time. And you guys know that macaron place. This place, I always didn't really care much. I mean, you can like go to the one in like LA. It's like everywhere now, but I didn't have a strong feeling or like inclination to go there because i'm just not a fan of macarons and they're known for it but this time i decided to go there because they have this like crushed croissant that's like covered in chocolate so i really wanted to get it but they didn't have it at the location i went to but i think it worked out because it was like nine in the morning i definitely should not be eating something like that that early so when i got there i just got black coffee instead and wow that was really really good i got that coffee and walked over to a museum and it was so good they used that coffee machine i don't know how to say it it's like j-u-r-a and i have been seeing that coffee machine but like i didn't really think much about it because i really like the traditional espresso machine like you got to do everything like manually but after getting that coffee I'm kind of sold like I really want that coffee machine I know I just told you I don't like pastries but I feel like you guys should go get this one from the Ritz it's so soft it has that like ombre like color it's so good it wasn't even that sweet either and you guys have to get their chocolate croissant it's not your average croissant it's like this kind of shape all the chocolate bits are like really thin they kind of look like twigs almost and when you take the first bite all the chocolate pieces start to break and it's like such an experience i would say to take that first bite really slowly so you can like really experience it and then now onto shopping i'm gonna focus more on shopping malls than like boutique shopping because in paris there's boutiques of your favorite brands like literally everywhere you can go to like rue saint honore like you'll just see every brand like imaginable so i'm going to mention all the shopping malls that i've been to but i will say in terms of the boutiques i really I think the first Chanel store on Rue Cambon is worth a visit. It is a huge, huge Chanel store. The selection is really, really good. And if you love Chanel, like it's definitely an experience to go to the very first store. So the first shopping mall is Gallery Lafayette. When people think of Paris shopping, they always mention Gallery Lafayette. There's a couple different locations and they're known for that like dome at the ceiling. It's 
very very beautiful they really do go all out for especially like christmas time it's a very beautiful mall but i would say it's not my favorite and it's mainly because of the crowd i'm really not a fan of like busy crowded places especially when it comes to shopping if there's too many people around like i don't want to do anything i just want to leave and gallery lafayette is always kind of like that for me even when i go on a thursday it's still so busy but their selection is really good they have a whole variety of brands a lot of brands that you don't normally see in the states especially or if you do there's like only one or two pieces so for me like an alternative to gallery lafayette can be either le bon marche or samaritan but le bon marche is in the left bank so unless you're going to that area it is a little bit out of the way i love that place because it's a lot quieter it still is a very nice mall and right across the street is one of my favorite stores ever it's like a huge department store all for food and you guys know my favorite truffle chips are from there so i love 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 that place and samaritan is very similar it's usually a very pleasant shopping experience not too many people around and i was really blown away by their fine jewelry section i mean there was like no one there which i love but compared to at least like what i'm used to like where i live they had such a huge variety i had a lot of fun looking at pieces that i normally wouldn't be able to see in person and the sales associate there told me that they actually have an underground tunnel that leads to the louvre and you guys know how busy that museum gets so if you want to make a visit to the louvre or you want to go shopping after the museum you can definitely take that underground tunnel every time i was in paris i did make a visit to all these shopping malls there was a new one this time that i discovered and i think might be my very favorite it is called Printemps, and this mall is huge i think there's like three different buildings or something so one is for home goods the amount of like amazing pieces that i saw was just like I want to cry and they have a whole like women's section men's section i didn't get a chance to go but inside i saw that they had celine and chanel as well so this is a mall that i'll definitely be like returning to and lastly i did want to mention some museums and tourist attractions because paris really isn't just to eat and shop there's so much culture there's so much history i think in total i've been to three museums the louvre um, musee d'orsay and then rodin but just a reminder that the louvre in the summertime is probably not the best idea i still haven't yet to even try to go see the mona lisa unless i'm going to paris for like the 11th time and i have like a whole week there i don't really think i'm going to like spend my time waiting in line to see that masterpiece that might not be real at the time that i'm there and every time i see pictures of the room with the mona lisa in it like it just doesn't seem like a good time to me it is so crowded like i don't know how you could really enjoy that piece every Everyone seems to be too busy like taking pictures and selfies and for me that's not really the best use of my limited time there but maybe one day i think my favorite tourist attraction in paris is still to this day palace of versailles i really underestimated how big that place is when i first planned my trip i only gave myself like 90 minutes to spend at the palace and when i got there i realized that this really could take the entire day i would definitely recommend going to that place in the summertime or at least when the garden is like alive and green because right now i think the fountain is also turned off and the garden just looks really really dead i mean it is winter season so the next time i really want to get the golf cart and also maybe like a private tour i'm usually not a fan of like guided tours but i think at a place like that it does make sense because there's so much history and having someone explain each piece or the significance of each room i think that would have been really really helpful so those are all the places that i want to mention today and recommend to you guys i really hope that you find my paris guide helpful and i will see you in my next video bye